Let me give you one very good example. Have you heard of Kenneth He again? One of the great men of God that America had produced. So early in his life, he went to one particular city in the Midwest, or in, in the middle of the US. So he went to this nice Pentecostal church, and there was a revival. And you know, in, uh, in those old days as well as today, in every Pentecostal church, there are at least five praying grandmas. Always five, at least five, if not more. And those grandmas always sit in the first row. First row. That is their permanent sitting. Permanent sitting. They never give up their seats for anybody. Not you all. Not you all. And neither will anybody else come and sit there because those are the grandma's seats. And these praying grandmas are also the prophesizers in the church. Everybody knows that and even including Brother Hagin. Because he comes to the church many times, he knows those grandmas very well. So every time there's a move of the spirit, it's one of the grandmas will stand up and give a word in tongues and interpretation. And it's always the right word. So, once a revival was taking place, and Brother Hagin came, and there was such a glory of God came down in the meeting, when everybody was still and quiet, from the back of the church, one young man stood out and gave out a beautiful word of prophecy. So, Brother Hagin discerned that it was a perfect word from the Lord. But when he looked at him closely, he could not recognize him, and uh, later while they were having tea with the pastor, he asked the pastor, who was that young man? So the pastor said, oh, he's just a brand new believer who has started coming to our church. Okay, fine. So after tea, Brother Hagin was driving to his hotel. As he was driving, uh, he came to a traffic light and this young man was walking past by. So as he was walking, Where the, there was a traffic light on the left side of the road is a street where it's full of prostitutes. So that is the red light district in that town. So Brother Hagin's car was at the signal waiting to lights to turn green so he can go forward. And he saw this young man come and turn left and walk down the street where from the beginning of the street to the end of the street is all full of brothels. So Brother Hagin saw that with shock. Just like all of you are gasping right now. <laughs> shock. This man on whom the Spirit of God came, how come he is walking down this street frequenting a brothel? So that shocked him. Nevertheless, he drove, he came to his hotel, he tried to sleep, he could not sleep. This bothered him, bugged him. How can the Spirit of the Lord come upon this man who was going to a brothel? How could? So he was so troubled, he could not sleep at all. So he got up, he knelt down, he said, Lord, how can you use this man? So he went on talking to God like that. And the Lord came to him. So the Lord asked him, what's your problem? <laughs> this is something nice about God, you know. After you went all your frustrations to him, he'll just come as if nothing has happened and ask you, what's your problem? What's troubling you? Tell me. Let's talk about it. So Brother Hagin poured out everything to the Lord. And he asked the Lord one question. Lord, how can you you such a man. So the Lord looked at him and he said, what did you see? I saw him, Lord, walking down that street. Do you know what happened next? So Brother Hagin kept quiet. Then the Lord said, let me tell you something about this young man. And the Lord showed him about his life. He said, this young man, before he got saved, 
that is the street where he frequents every day. He, his day is never complete without visiting those prostitutes. And he just got saved a week ago. So, without him realizing, his feet turned into that direction where he was going all his life. And what you did not see was, after taking 10 steps, he suddenly came to his mind and he was shocked that he had come to this filthy place. He knelt down and cried out to me for repentance and asked me the grace to break this evil bondage. And then he got up and he left that place. You didn't see all that. Because his heart was tender, my spirit came upon him and I used him in the meeting. So Brother Hagin was relieved to hear that. Then the Lord continued, by the way, let me tell you something about those grandmas. <laughs> so those grandmas came up, their report card came up before the Lord. And the Lord said, you know, you have such a high opinion about those grandmas. Let me tell you, for the last 30 years, they have been living a life of disobedience to me. I asked them to do something and till today, after 30 years, they have not done it. And that is the reason why my spirit did not come upon them. See, all our opinions are tainted with self. That's why we are quick to judge without knowing the complete picture. We are quick to jump into a conclusion based on what our eyes see. Not righteous judgments. But look at the Lord Jesus. He said, I hear what my father tells me. And then I speak and I judge. And my judgment is righteous. So, the second thing that you need to surrender is your opinions. Because when the glory of God is going to come next, there will be such an awesome things take place in the body of Christ where we may be tempted to criticize and build an opinion, this is not of God. Let me give you one example. On the second night or the first night, maybe the second night, Brother Bobby Connor shared a visitation he had from the Lord where the Lord went into different concordations and changed into different form. You remember that? Yes. And he said to himself, I am never going to say this anywhere publicly. Because how can you imagine? See, the Lord, we always have a picture of how the Lord Jesus looked like. Perfect man. Always gentle, nice, wearing a white robe with a red sash over his shoulder and appearing so serene, so calm. Can you imagine him doing like this? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine the Lord doing all that? See? We cannot imagine all that. And then he goes into all this motion and he becomes another. Have you seen the movie Man in the Black? Some of those monsters, they do like that, you know? <laughs> See, these are opinions that you need to crucify. You need to take that opinion, self-opinion, and bury it and surrender it at the foot of the cross. Such things will take place in a greater manner. Like I told you about the different kinds of angels that will come. The cherubim, you, you have not seen them. But at least the Bible describes how the cherubim look like. But the Bible does not describe how the seraphim look like, except for the number of wings they have. But it does not describe how their face looks like. So when you see a seraphim, 
which will not be like what you have imagined it to be, then what's going to be your opinion? Are you going to say, be gone, Satan? Which we will mostly do. God is going to do great, awesome things. The many, many secrets that are in heaven, which the Bible calls the mysteries of God, it will all be made manifest in these last days. That's what Revelation chapter 10 says. When the seventh angel blows his trumpet, then the mystery of God will be completed. Meaning, the, mis the revelations of the mystery of God will be revealed so that it will be completed. Whatever that needs to be revealed to mankind will be revealed. All those living creatures in heaven, when they appear before you, they, these are great, awesome creatures that you have never imagined how they look like. You cannot imagine. When they come and stand before you, how are you going to react? When I first saw them, I was scared to death. And I thought, this must be a demon. Certainly a demon. That was my first reaction, you know, when I saw a beam that, that looked like a lion. And the Lord said, no, he is one of the living creature from Revelation chapter 4. So, your opinions, take it and surrender. When, when you see God using other people, take your opinion, surrender it.